What's up you guys, my name is Daniel and on this channel we talk about personal finance with a focus in the stock market. And in today's video, we're going to be going back to the roots of this channel where originally my intent was to share with you every single move that I make on my well simple portfolio in every single video that I do. However, the channel has been shifting from just the portfolio review to more stock analysis and other personal finance things. So I figured we're going to be making this series more of a once a month thing. So this is the update for the month of July, what's been happening in my portfolio. So in the past month, I've been doing a lot of buying. I actually bought nine different stocks and sold off three positions of mine. And two of these stocks that I bought are high growth companies that I think I could see at least 100 or 200% gain in the next five years. And the current cash position in my portfolio is roughly around $1,500, which is not exactly where I want it to be, according to one of my previous videos, where I stated I want a cash position of around 10 to 30%. However, we are getting there, but I guess I keep buying things because I see deals in the market right now, especially on the Canadian market in the stocks that haven't quite yet recovered. And just a fun fact before we get into this video, if you guys compare the returns of the TSX versus the S&P 500, they're dramatically different. So for example, if you put $1,000 into the S&P 500 at the bottom of the 2008 financial crisis, guess how much you would have today? The S&P 500 actually returned 370%, putting your $1,000 portfolio at $4,700 at this moment today in time. However, if you were to invest that same $1,000 into the TSX Composite Index, your returns would be dramatically different. And the difference is roughly around $2,000, a little bit more than that, because the TSX Composite only returned 110% over the past 11 years or so. But I still continue to invest in the Canadian market for two reasons. A, because I'm Canadian and I have Canadian dollars. And B, because I think you can still find gems in the Canadian market. And if we really look at why the S&P 500 has moved up so much is because the weight of technology in the S&P 500, it roughly makes up around 25% of the S&P 500 right now versus even five years ago in 2015, it only made up 20% of the index. However, for the TSX composite, it's a lot lower than that. And I think as technology in Canada booms, I think the TSX index could actually see some great returns over the years. And with all that said, before we dive into this video, if you're interested in investing right now, I have two links down below in the description where you can sign up for either Wellsimple or Quest Trade. Personally, I use Wellsimple Trade to trade Canadian stocks because of the $0 commission fees, and I use Quest Trade to trade US stocks because they have the cheapest commission fees. So if you want to join either of these platforms, there's some goodies for you down in the description down below. You'll either get some cash back or some credit towards commission fees. Without further ado, let's jump right into the portfolio. So the action for this month began on June 23rd when I bought five shares of BPY. And I know in one of my previous videos, I mentioned I might not be buying BPY or any of the retail REITs, but I think when I looked at the dividend and actually how safe this dividend was, I decided to purchase five more shares at these discounted prices. And I got my BPY shares for roughly around $14.72 a piece. And the dividend currently right now, if you were to look at it, it's around 12.04%. And that's an awesome dividend. And a lot of people actually be looking at that, kind of skeptical if BPY could continue paying this. But I think they can because a lot of their customers are still paying their rent and able to do so even during the whole shutdown. And the fact that the Canadian Society actually continued to open up from May till now in July, I think this is good news for BPY as consumers are going out and spending money and retailers are able to open up slowly. If we fast forward to June 29th, I made my next purchase here, and I bought some of the ticker symbol SIA or Sienna Senior Living. And I actually mentioned this stock on one of my previous videos for Canadian stocks for the month of July, so if you haven't checked that out, you can check that video out, and I actually explained why I'm buying Sienna Senior Living. And I bought roughly around 20 shares at a cost basis of $9.27. Just one quick note about this company, SIA was actually trading at its 52 week low around that time, which is why I decided to buy in and I'm bullish on this company for the long term. On that very same day, I actually picked up some CAR.UN or Canadian Apartment Properties. 
And I've been meaning to boost up this position and the fact that it's actually come down below my cost basis of around $52, I decided to purchase two more shares at a cost basis of $48.26. Two videos ago, I actually talked about the stock as a great stock to get into if you're a beginner in the stock market. And the reason is CAR actually invests in a lot of real estate and rents this out. And I think within Canada, the immigration numbers as they continue to rise and a lot more people are looking for places to rent because real estate is just going up and up and up right now. So I think CAR has a pretty good future ahead of it. And we can actually see this in the past five years. The stock has rewarded its investors through capital appreciation as well as through dividends. Now, if we move forward a couple of days to July 3rd, I made my first purchase of RioCan. So this is the first stock that I actually added to my portfolio that's new and I'm not just averaging into it. I bought 10 shares of RioCan at a cost of $15.62. Then fast forward to July 15th, I purchased another 10 shares for $15.21. And in my video of four Canadian stocks for the July, I actually said that I would be adding RioCan to my portfolio because the dividend was very juicy, around nine to 10%, I think. And RioCan is actually a staple in a lot of investors' portfolios as it has a very solid real estate portfolio. Although it is commercial real estate, they didn't get hit as hard as some smaller companies because they have very high quality properties and the tenants that they have are big names as well as no company makes up a vast majority of the revenue. I think the largest amount of revenue that they make from one company is maybe around two to 4%. Moving on to the next stock that I bought, this is Canada Goose. And if you guys have been following my channel, you know that I always average into Canada Goose, especially at these levels right now, when it's around the $30 or high 20s. I bought five shares of Canada Goose and my cost basis on these for July 6 was $31.13. And you guys should know by now that I'm bullish on Canada Goose for the long run because of the China expansion and the fact that they're innovating their retail experience. Now the next three stocks are the three positions that I sold off. The first one being Laurentian Bank. And I sold all four of my shares at a price of $28.06. And the reason why I took an L on this and I actually lost around $12 per share, Laurentian Bank actually cut their dividend, which drove down the price of the stock from $40 all the way down to the $25 before recovering to around $28. And because they cut their dividend, I felt like this was a good time. And because they cut their dividend, I felt like the price wasn't going to go back up to $40 anytime soon. So I figured I'll cut my losses right now and keep that money in cash instead of keeping it in Laurentian Bank, which will only pay a measly dividend of around, I think two to 3%. The next stock that I sold was IPL or Inner Pipeline. And I sold all 20 of my shares at a price of $12.04. And again, I took another L with this because IPL actually cut their dividend as well, just like Laurentian Bank, and the stock sold off heavily. My cost basis was around $20 per share, so I lost around $8 per share. But at 10 shares, that's $80. Not terribly bad for this portfolio size, but I think um, it still hurts to lose money. But I figured it's not gonna recover anytime soon. And in the long run, I'm actually not bullish on oil and gas. So I don't think IPL will recover that much. It might go back up to $15 or so. I think the demand for oil and gas is going to continue to decline as consumers move towards electrification, basically buying electric cars. The last position that I sold here was TFI International, and I sold my two shares at a price of $52.50. And if you guys watched one of my previous videos, I think it was like two stocks for the month of May or something like that. I was actually interested in building up my TFI position. However, I never found a good price to buy into TFI. And for that reason, because it actually ran up from my original cost basis of $42, I decided to sell this position off after making $10 per share. So I basically made a gain of $20 and I figured, you know, I might as well just cut this off right now, keep it in cash because I feel like we might see some pullbacks in the market and I'd rather just keep it in cash just in case we see another crash. And for me to keep two shares of TFI and try to keep track of the company, I think it just wasn't worth my time. And ultimately, that's why I sold it off. Then on July 21st, I decided to buy Drone Delivery Canada or ticker symbol FLT. I bought 50 shares at a price of 75 cents per share. I actually bought the stock after they announced another round of issuing of shares. And the reason why I continued to buy FLT is because at 75 cents, this was below my cost basis for FLT. And currently I hold about 600 shares of FLT in my portfolio. 
And in the long run, I'm bullish on FLT because I believe drone delivery is actually going to be the future of delivery. It won't replace all delivery, but it will have its place in the market. Drone delivery is great because you don't need to pay a driver to go out there and drive a package around. And if you need something quick and fast, drones are actually a great way because they can fly directly from point A to point B. Instead of a driver who needs to drive around the city making different right turns and left turns because they have to follow traffic. So drone delivery, I believe, will have its place in the market, and it's still not quite there yet because the technology is not perfected, but Drone Delivery Canada is showing promise as it actually earned its first revenues in this previous quarter. Moving forward to July 23rd, I purchased 10 shares of Parkland Corp at a cost basis of $23.69. In Parkland Corp, the core of their business is basically running these funeral homes. And funeral homes are for sure going to be around forever, I think, because, you know, until we all die on this earth, there's a need for funeral homes. We're never going to find a cure for death. I think everyone's going to die eventually, whether it be in 50 years, 100 years, 150 years, people are still going to die every single day. As morbid as that sounds, Parkland Corp is here to capitalize on that. So I think and the fact that they're buying up these smaller chains of funeral homes and building up a larger conglomerate, I think Parkland Corp has a great strategy going forward and they're going to be able to continue executing well and buying up more smaller funeral homes and making each business more profitable because they can share some of the costs like accounting, general administration, marketing, and stuff like that. Also at $23.69, this is below my cost basis of around $26. So I was averaging into this position. And finally, the last two additions, they're actually single share additions to my portfolio. And the reason why I purchased these two stocks is because they're two companies that I really want to keep track of and possibly average into over the next couple of months. And the first one is Dechebo and the other one is Dai and Durham. So both these stocks, they're actually software as a service businesses. So for Dechebo, they're a learning management system or LMS and their core customers are corporations. And what these corporations use the Chabo's platform for is basically for educating their employees. And LMS provides these corporations a way to provide training to their employees, either through video training or just through reading material. And the Chabo's platform is very special because they use AI to be able to read through or listen through the video or the text and funnel these to the right employees who need this kind of training. As more and more corporations get onto the platform, the Chabo's AI will become a lot smarter. And as the AI becomes a lot smarter, the curated list of content for each employee or user on the platform will become more and more targeted. And I think the value that corporations will get out of this through employees just learning more will be greater than what they're paying for this learning management system. And if we look at the Chabo's charts and what investors think about the stock, they think the stock is something big because the company IPO'd roughly around nine months ago and the stock has shot up by 300%. I think they IPO'd around $10 or so, and today the stock price is roughly around $40. And for Dye and Durham, what they are is a SaaS company for business law solutions as well as real estate law solutions. So I'll be looking into the company a bit more and doing a deeper dive as they recently did IPO, but I think the fact they are a SaaS company in Canada, and there aren't many companies in Canada in this space, and they have a very good customer base of around 25,000 different paying customers. I think this company shows some promise. I think a lot of the tech companies on the TSX take a little bit of time before ramping up the stock price. And we see this in Dechebo, we see this in Lightspeed, and we see this in like Shopify, for example. So I'm getting in early for Dye and Durham as they recently IPO'd maybe a couple weeks ago. And I think that this stock has somewhere to go. And as I do more research into it, I'll let you guys know what I find. So that wraps it up for the portfolio's buys and sells. The portfolio currently has a total value of $17,471.62 as of recording this video on Sunday, July 26th. And now, as you can see on the screen here, we actually have my dividend tracker up. So this tracks my dividends month over month and how much I'm getting from each of my positions. So you can see here on the left hand side, the total monthly dividends, we actually have started out with 86 cents and it's been building up as I've been adding more dividend stocks to my portfolio. And you can see for the month of July so far, I've earned $23.45 in dividends. And this is totally passive. I didn't have to do anything to earn this money. In the month of June though, I earned $45.37. 
And the reason why I earned more in the month of June is because some of my companies only pay out dividends quarterly. And every three months, I guess in the month of June and the month of March, we can see I get a big dividend from BPY. It's $13.75. As well as MFC is also paying me a large dividend as well of $9.80. So both these dividends combined together make up $22 of dividends, which is roughly the difference you see between June and July. And if we scroll over to the right of this dividend sheet tracker, we can actually see in a graph format how my total monthly dividends have been tracking. So you can see in the beginning it was steadily tracking upwards, but then as soon as I added more money into my account, which is around August or September in 2019, the dividends started to spike. And around this time here, I didn't add too many dividend stocks, which is why the dividend has been going up and down because of the quarterly dividends, which gives variation month over month. So in the month of July, I received the regular monthly dividends of IPL, SIA, SOT.UN, PLC, and the rest you can see up top. And then on the right hand side, all these um, highlighted in blue, these are the dividends I pay every quarter. So I received some SVI, AQN, GSY, and TFI International. So for the month of July, there should be no other dividends coming in because three months ago, this actually shows you the quarterly dividends I receive and there's no other positions that have actually paid out. Also in the month of June, I closed out my position on MSI, so I won't be receiving any more dividends from MSI. So I'll probably just narrow out this column so we don't see it anymore. If you turn your attention over to the left side of the spreadsheet, we can see the trailing 12 month dividends. So in December 2019, it started at $65 and it's grown since then to $275. And what this trailing 12 month dividend shows me is how much dividends this portfolio and Wealth Simple Trade can generate me over one year. So as of right now, it's $275 and we can see the growth of this trailing 12 month dividends in this chart here at the bottom right of my spreadsheet. So you can see it's been a steady incline as I've been adding more dividend stocks to my portfolio and I plan to keep adding more as I deposit more money into the portfolio. So this is a strategy that you guys can use for your dividend portfolios by depositing cash into your account daily, monthly, weekly, or even yearly, you can see your dividends increase as you continue to dollar cost average into your dividend stocks. And this is where the excitement comes for dividend investing if you're into that. My portfolio is not a full dividend portfolio because I do have growth stocks and that's kind of what I want to keep it at in this portfolio. I do want to continue increasing my growth stock position because I am young and I can take on more risk. However, if you're in your 40s or 50s and looking forward to retirement in the next 10 to 20 years, maybe you want to start building up a nest egg of dividend stocks that will pay you juicy monthly dividends or quarterly dividends and this will essentially become your income once you retire. So if you enjoyed this portfolio update or saw any positions that you're looking to add into your portfolio from what I talked about, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, smash the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. Keep up the grind and have a great day.